Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1939. Be prepared to be inspired. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, inspiring automotive enthusiasts, and welcome to Cars Yeah. Today I'm in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Sounds like a lovely place with a very special guest by the name of Kenneth Midget. Kenneth, welcome to Cars Yeah. Do you have any gear, and are you ready to release the clutch? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Or I should say release the shutter button, but uh, these days these cameras don't really have those, I don't think. But uh, I know that... uh, uh, camera technology has come a long way. We're going to be talking about photography today and this career you have and the beautiful images that you capture. But before I give you a proper introduction, what's one little thing that maybe people may not know about you, Kenneth? Um, something people don't know about me. Yeah. I play the piano. I've had a, a rash of musicians, it seems like, lately. Secret musicians. The piano. How long have you played the piano? Well, I started when I was in maybe the second, third grade, something like that, and then actively played, you know, for over a decade, probably. Now, I'm a little embarrassed to say that I can play the piano, but, you know, I'm I'm a little uh, little rusty, lost a bit of that. But uh, I'd say a reason that people don't know that I play is because I really don't like to play in front of people. (laughs) Yeah. So it's just kind of a me thing. Well, like photography, practice makes perfect, as you know, with with music. music I started playing guitar as a kid and played a lot and then kind of put it up for a while. And then I pick it up and I go, oh, I'm not very good. And you think it's just going to all come back to where you were. But music, like driving, like any any skill uh, you have to work on a little bit. I always wished I had taken up the piano way back in the day. I could read music really well and I could sit down in front of a piano kind of figure some of it out, but uh, I always loved the piano. And uh, yeah, you should uh, sit down and play that a little more, maybe for, you have two kids, right? I do have two kids. Yeah. Have they taken up music or are they old enough for that yet? (sighs) Well, I've got, uh, Kyler's five and Caroline's seven, so they're definitely old enough, yeah, yeah, to be interested in music. Um, We haven't really gone that route yet. Yeah. Even with, you know, I've got the piano sitting in my living room and I guess it's more of just a (laughs) <laughs> you know, a decorative piece than <laughs> yeah. a, you know, an instrument, unfortunately. But, uh, yeah. Well, maybe if you played a little bit more, they might go, hmm, that looks interesting. You never know. So that happened with me with my guitar. My son picked up wanting to play guitar after uh, I picked up my guitar once. And he's like, wait a minute. You know how to play that thing? I thought it was just something that hung on the wall. So, yeah. So we got him a guitar and he started playing too. So uh, there you go. You never know what you might spur. Well, let me give you a proper introduction. We're going to dive into this fun world that you're living in in your career. Kenneth Midget is a professional photographer with a passion for motorsports and automobiles. Sharing the ideas of the great photographer Ansel Adams, Kenneth feels a great photograph is one that fully expresses what one feels in the deepest sense about what is being photographed. While Kenneth shoots a variety of subjects, over the past decade, he has wrapped his passion for automobiles and motorsports tightly into his business. He's a product of the original The Fast and the Furious and 90s import scene, and from there has evolved an interest for motorsports, classic cars, and historic racing. He's worked in the IndyCar paddock with teams including Andretti Autosport, Errol McLaren, and Carlin Racing. He thrives in the fast-paced environment where every moment is crucial and preparation is key. Sounds like racing. We'll be back in just a minute to learn more, but first a word from our valued sponsor, so give them a little listen, and we'll be right back. Covercraft's newest three-layer all-climate cover is especially engineered for moderate weather conditions, and it's treated with an extra UV-resistant formula. It's soft, it's breathable, and it's easy to store, all while pampering your paint, providing maximum UV, rain, and dust protection. If you live where it's windy, no worries. Simply add their gust guards for windy conditions to add extra protection to keep your cover in place. Your three-layer all-climate cover is custom-tailored with Covercraft's attention to detail, form and fit, with the quality and 
attention to detail that's been their tradition since 1965. Covercraft protects cars, trucks, motorcycles, RVs, trailers, and watercraft too. Every one of my vehicles is protected with a Covercraft cover. And I have a deal for you. Use the code yeah 21 Y-E-A-H-2-1 at Covercraft.com and you'll get 10% off your Covercraft order plus free shipping. That's right. So get 10% off with free shipping by simply using the code ya 21 at checkout. Covercraft, protecting the things that move you. When it was time to renew my collector car policy, my carrier raised my rates by a lot. But why? My usage was the same. My car's value was the same. And I had never made a claim. I didn't even have a ticket. The only change was their rate, and they had no reason why. What's with that? I researched my options, I spoke to others, and with American Collectors Insurance is where I now have my policy. What a difference. A live person actually answers the phone. She spent time learning about me and my Porsche Turbo, the one I call my orange crush, and provided a reasonable quote. American Collectors Insurance now protects my special ride. I'm saving hundreds of dollars and I can sleep at night knowing my baby is properly insured. Why wait until your next premium is due? Give them a call today for your personal agreed value quote. Call 866-AC1-YEAH. That's 866-224-9324. Tell them you're a friend of mine. Mark Green at Cars Yeah. American Collectors Insurance. Classic car insurance designed by collectors for collectors. Automotive enthusiasts just like you and me. That's American Collectors Insurance. So, Kenneth, uh, your photography captured my attention after I viewed your your shots from the Chattanooga Motor Car Festival. It's an event that I promoted here not too long ago. They have a really different vibe, a vibrance, a sparkle, a shine that, for me, really made them stand out. Uh, Can you tell us more about how you got into photography and your approach to shooting, specifically automobiles, racing, and the people in the industry, because I love the way you capture the people. It's a nice way to get the inspirational tires turning a little bit here on cars. Yeah, so Kenneth, I usually say take the wheel, but I'll say grab the camera. Um, yeah, so I first picked up a camera. It wasn't until I was in, I don't know, I'd graduated high school, and I was always kind of artistic and creative and doodling, and you know, obviously the piano is you know, art form and, Mm -hmm. um, it kind of evolved. And when I got that camera, I just started taking pictures and I found some forums online and began getting involved in that community. Basically, I just started looking at pictures that I liked and then trying to recreate them in a way and then eventually develop my own style out of that. And the same way, you're probably familiar with speed hunters yes. and I went to the 2012 U.S. Grand Prix, the inaugural one in Austin, and I took a, f- a picture there and I submitted it to speed hunters and they used it as a cover photo for one of their articles. Wow. And then from that, that point on it, you know, I just kind of got bit by the bug and it's all I wanted to do. And I put everything, eventually everything into, you know, go into every race that I could get to. And fortunately for me, a way to do that was with historic racing. They typically are much more open to photographers and it's kind of easier. You know, it's not like trying to get into the top level of motorsport or go and shoot F1 and you don't know anything. So um, I kind of got to stretch my legs there and uh, got involved in that community and built some uh, connections and network and portfolio and then just kind of steamrolled. And um you got you to work. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. the key and right then, there. Started shooting lots and lots. That's right. Yeah. Just uh, as much as I could. And like you said, practice makes perfect. So found photographers I liked and practice, practiced and tried to kind of emulate and, mm-hmm. you know, evolve off of that style. And um, yeah, that's kind of where it, you know, where it all started and how it got me to where I am now. You shoot a lot of different things, and one of the things I noticed in looking at your website and at your portfolio, you really like to dig deep into the people in this environment. Most people go to a race and they just shoot the cars moving, or they go to a concours and they're always trying to duck and dodge and wait till people are out of the way. One of the things I noticed is you like to capture people and reactions and moments, which I think is, is more interesting to me as a photographer because you can go and look at pictures of cars 
all over the place. And of course, photography is blown up with these little handheld phone devices that we have. Everybody's a photographer these days, it seems like. But not everybody has an eye to capture the right moment. And of course, light is a key part of it. Is that a big part of your interest in photography is, is wrapping the people into the environment? Yeah, I think so. I think it's important to tell a complete story. It can get a bit boring just going to the track and taking a picture of a car going around. And I think that to tell that story, you know, the people are the people are the story. Without the people, there is no racing. So spending time in the paddock and taking pictures of people interacting and the drivers getting in the cars and putting their gloves on and all of these little bits and pieces of details really add to make a whole story. What I like to do is take all of these pictures as well as like atmospheric photos. Say you've got a little, you know, I'm shooting wide. You've got the car on track really small in the middle, and then you can see all the fans, you know, surrounding the sides of the track and then flags waving. And I think all of these things really add to show you the complete story that combined with the pans and the, the whole set is what I try and do when I'm at the track. The other thing that I see in your work is the use of light. Now, most people will say, well, of course, you got to have light with photography. But the way you use light really captured my attention in many of your shots. And you do things that a lot of people in what I say, basic photography, like, you know, don't have the sun behind somebody, have them front lit yeah. and all these kinds yeah. of things, which makes sense. And in many cases that works well, but you're using my interpretation, but you can explain it deeper light in a different way that adds to that sense of mood that you were talking about. And when I introduced you, I mentioned that quote from Ansel Adams. And I think even people who are not photographers have heard of him and know who he is and the great nature photography that he shot and a lot more that he did. Why is light so important for you? It's important because light is a photo uh, in the simplest of terms. It's just, cap uh, you know, the sensor is just capturing light. And I think, you know, in order to make a photo dynamic, something that you want to look at, the light needs to be interesting. And I don't always have the ability to, you know, it, like high noon, the sun's shining straight down. There's no long shadows. There's, you don't have the pretty, you know, hues of a sunset, but there's always ways to play with the light. And like you said, uh, there are rules, but rules are meant to be broken. So <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Shooting backlit is hard. It's, it's a technique that I've kind of it's always constantly evolving as far as how I process the images how I take them in camera with the intention of how I want it to look at the end result I'm always paying attention to light to the extent that before I go out on track for any single session I'm sitting at my computer I'm looking at a map of the track I'm studying where the light's going to be hitting what direction it's coming from down to, I mean, every little detail because I want to make sure when I'm out there, I know exactly what I'm working with and how I can use that light to make a pretty picture. Some of your photography I, I, remind me of a German photographer I had on this show very early. I think he was, I guess, 135, 136, somewhere in there. Uh, Gunther Raup. And I'm just, I always say his last name wrong, Rupp, R-A-U-P-P. -P. He's been doing the Ferrari uh, calendars for years. He's an official Ferrari photographer for their annual calendars. And he does the same thing. He uses this light in the opposite side of the car, in the back of the car. And obviously he probably uses reflectors and there's other things he does. But some of your photography reminds me of the way he shoots because his imagery is so unique and different. When you first look at it, you go, why is this so different? different it has and i mentioned it in your bio kind of a sparkle and a shine to it a lot of people these days and i've said that photography in my opinion has somewhat been dumbed down a bit because of the proliferation of everyone having a camera in their hand now in the way of a phone people have i think it's kind of diminished their realization of what is great photography because everybody takes photos now and mm -hmm. oh that's beautiful and that's great but when you see great photography like yours and the many other photographers I've had on the show here, there's something that stands out. There's something that different is different. One of it is what you're capturing, the way you see something. The other is that, that use of light and so forth. If you were going to advise people to be a better photographer, and I've gotten some very interesting answers to this question. One was 
t- have your back to your subject, bend down and shoot between your legs, <laughs> which was, <laughs> which the idea there was to look at it from a different angle and view than you normally do, where you just stand and somewhat look down on an image, you know, get low, get high, get move over to the side. Right. How, how would you advise someone to be better at photography? Good question. I'm going to take a minute to think about it. Yeah, I'm thinking something simple. I get a lot of people asking me how to shoot slower panning shots or how to, I don't know, in general, yeah, like you're saying, just take better photos. And I always just say practice, just shoot, shoot, shoot. The more you shoot in general, the better you're going to get. You're going to see, you know, what doesn't look good. You're going to, oh, I don't like that. And then so you're going to learn what you do like. And then you're going to learn what you think looks good. In general, if you think it looks good, other people look think it looks good too. So that's what I tell people. Just practice, practice, practice. And uh, the more you shoot, the better you're going to get. Goes back to that conversation we had at the beginning of our talk today about practicing the piano or a musical instrument. Uh, it works for everything. There you go. Practice. Try different things. Don't be afraid to to get out there. How how about driving inspirations? I mentioned at the beginning of our talk, Ansel Adams and that great quote from him, who's been a great influence on you and your photography. I follow a lot of different photographers. The first one that comes to mind is always Vladimir Reese, and he shoots for Red Bull and Formula One, and his, his photos are always next level. It almost looks like a movie screenshot, very cinematic, you know, it makes you want to look longer. I like that. I like that comment. Makes you want to look longer. That's great. So he's he's probably my one of my biggest uh, inspirations in motorsport. More realistically, like closer to home, I've got a good friend of mine. Her name is Abigail. She kind of gave me my first real chance in any kind of professional realm of photography and just took me under her wing and mentored me. And we did we would do events and weddings and um, family stuff. So not motorsport, but there's a lot of parallels to be drawn between a wedding and running around in a pit lane. You know, it's <laughs> it's it's fast paced. Uh, you're trying to catch candids. You you know you've only got one chance to get the first kiss, so you've got to make sure that you're going to get it. And right. a lot of times it's the same way, you know, you might only get one chance to capture that pit stop. So you better get it. And so she, she mentored me. And to this day, I mean, we talk all the time. She helps me with business questions. She lends me gear. So yeah, she's been a, a big inspiration for me. Nice to have a friend like that. I always have said people that dare to shoot weddings are very daring people <laughs> because, oh man, you cannot mess that up. <laughs> that will that will end you. Uh, yeah, it's sure. a it's a lot of pressure. A lot oh, of pressure. Oh yeah, we're gonna take a short break. When we come back. I want to talk about a challenge in your career or in your life. So keep that thought in mind, and we'll be right back. Linkage, it's a new quarterly publication and website that covers the automotive market, driving, restoring, collecting, and discovering your passion for motor vehicles. Linkage is about experiences, opinions, and values. Linkage is an actual, informed, reasoned opinion based on first-hand experiences. A talented Linkage team covers the automotive world, the people who share your passion and mine, smart, considered, rational, and experienced opinions, ones you can learn from and grow. That includes our passion that drives auctions and the collector car market. So come with me and join us on this journey and be sure to use the code cars yeah when you subscribe and they'll give you ten dollars off. Boom! Linkage geared for the automotive life. Subscribe today at linkagemag.com. Here at Cars Yeah, it's all about inspiration. And our charity of choice is Tech Force Foundation, where it's all about making a positive difference in young people's lives. Tech Force helps young adults discover their talents and passions for all things automotive, with a mission of helping students develop a career as a professional technician. Tech Force awards nearly $2 million in scholarships every year for students to pursue technical education, and they support hands-on activities, 
events, and mentorships across the country, working to change the outdated perceptions of these careers. Auto techs are in high demand, but the supply of qualified technicians is critically short. They need your help to fuel their mission. Learn more and join me in supporting them at techforce.org. So we're back. Let's talk about a big obstacle, big challenge, big failure, something that really kind of pushed you back, but taught you a really valuable lesson that you've carried forward into your life. What was that bumpy road like? So uh, one time I got sent out to Mexico City uh, to shoot Formula E, and I was on assignment specifically to cover just, you know, sponsorship things, um, kind of like sponsorship booths and signage and all that kind of stuff that you don't really think about, but we have to take pictures of anyways. They flew me out to Mexico City. I went with my wife. It was, you know, awesome adventure. And then I get back and they the client's asking for the photos and it turns out that I missed like a major portion of the booths and the sponsors and, you know, major things that I, when I was there, it was like a different section of the paddock. And oh, no. I didn't, I didn't even, you know, I obviously should have known, but I just missed it. It kind of seems simple now. Um, and it probably wasn't that big of a deal, but to me, I beat myself up about it and I was like, they're never going to want me to shoot for them again. And I probably, you know, I ruined this agency's reputation and these sort of things. And, and after it was over, you know, I kind of talked, I talked to people I was working with and they were all just kind of like, we've all done it. It happens and just uh, move on. We'll, we'll be fine. We'll make up for it in the future or whatever. And so I just kind of learned that you just got to move on. We all make these mistakes as long as you own it and you're, you're honest about it and, you know, do your best, never do it again. And, you know, everything's going to be great. So, well, my lesson, my takeaway from your story and been there, done that uh, is uh, preparation. And it aligns very well with motorsports that many a race is won before you even get to the track. And when you're getting ready to go out on a shoot, preparation, preparation, preparation is key, right? Uh, Scouting locations, getting all your angles, kind of determining what it's going to be. Spending that extra time is the key to that challenge for sure. 100%. Yes. Yeah, for sure. Let's talk about a special vehicle in your life. Uh, well, actually, I'm going to back up before I ask you that question because I, I like to ask a question about a bucket list idea. Are there some events that looking ahead in your, your career, sp- specific to motorsports and to automotive, that you'd really like to cover? I mentioned in the beginning the Chattanooga Motor Car festival which is how i was introduced to you and that's such a unique event in its setting and its environment are there some more events looking ahead that you'd really like to be a part of and and go shoot yes it's something similar to the chattanooga motor car festival i think it has a lot of like amelia island vibes of concourse and really nice cars you know the top level concourse type cars and a lot of that that I've not been around, it would be it would be really fun to to shoot an event like that. Maybe you know, obviously a Goodwood or um, a members meeting where it's yeah, where it's the the you know the best of the best. And I feel like it was probably better uh, a few years ago. I don't know if it's kind of been uh, watered down a little bit these days, but yeah, I would love to do that. Um, and obviously, Formula One. Formula One is the pinnacle of. Motorsport is the pinnacle of what I feel every motorsport photographer wants to be shooting. And, you know, everything that comes with that Monaco, I could go on forever. (laughs) WRC, Le Mans, I've never been to Le Mans. I need to be at Le Mans, you know, these sorts of things. So, yeah, someday I want to be shooting Formula One and hopefully that's not far away. You mentioned Goodwood, great. I mean, that would be tremendous. Uh, Via d'Est in Italy, great Concours event, which would be wonderful because the environment there and the setting on the lake is just so spectacular. Uh, have you ever gone out and shot at Laguna Seca during Monterey Car Week? Not during Car Week, no. I was at the Rinsport reunion, uh, the last one they had out there, and I mean, that was fantastic. Oh, yeah, I was there too. That was insane. <laughs> i never seen so many cool Porsches and I'm a Porsche guy. It's like, oh my gosh, everywhere you looked, you just, yeah. uh, you couldn't look away. Another one that is kind of unique and fun would be Lift Cult that uh, Patrick Long puts on, which always is in some unique setting. They were in Indianapolis last month in kind of an old part of the town. They've shot in a lumber yards. They did it at the uh, back lot of a, a Hollywood studio uh, before the last one. So 
There's so many cool events to go to. Let's talk about a special vehicle in your life. Is there a special vehicle that stands out for you? And if so, share a memory about that ride. My first car, I call it my first car, a Nissan 240SX, uh, 1997. I got it when I was a senior in high school. I basically drove it uh, until it blew up. And then <laughs> I, uh, you know, it's the it's the classic drift car, front engine, real wheel drive, little import. And um, after I blew up the engine, I swapped in a, a SR20 DET from Japan and then um, which is a pretty standard thing to do with those cars and uh, went from like you know factory 125 horsepower to like mm. 250 250 plus and you know one swoop and from then on yeah it was I drove that car all the time any chance I had you know just go drive the back roads kill some time whatever that yeah, everything was about that car when when I had it. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Well, you come from that era we mentioned the, the '90s movie uh, era of Fast and the Furious, so that kind of makes sense that that was yep. uh, the car yep. for you with that generation. It's cool. I'm gonna crawl into your skull and be a little bit of a car psychologist with you today. If you were manifest as a vehicle, what would you be? But more importantly, why? I think I might be maybe like an older. British Roadster. Okay, that's very interesting. Why is that? So, so like, uh, I'm thinking like a Triumph TR6 ish, 60 something, simple classic lines. You can still have fun. Uh, you know, it's spunky and fun, likes to have fun, but you're not going, you know, 150 mile an hour down the straightaways. It doesn't have the power. I like to take my time, I like to stop. And, you know, look around every now and then. I don't, you know, if you're just running and gunning from one thing to the next, that's not me. So, um, and then a reliable, maybe I'm making an assumption on that, but um, <laughs> older cars tend to be easier to work on. So I think that kind of aligns with my personality. Laid back, uh, still likes to have fun, you know, simple clean lines and just go out for a cruise and have fun, you know. I like it. Stop and smell the flowers is the message I hear in that answer That's right. to that question. That's right. yeah. So important to stop and look. I, you, we go back to handheld cameras on phones. You go to so many events and you see everybody with that phone up. And I purposely went to a car show once and I did, it was very hard for me because I always have cameras on me and I didn't take a camera. And a friend of mine suggested this. He said, go to a show and don't take any pictures. Just enjoy the show. Talk to people spend that time to really look at a car. And I tell you, I've been to events where, and you probably experienced this because of your professional line. I come back and I look at the pictures. I don't even remember staying in front of that car. <laughs> and and uh, All the time. All yeah. The time. And it's really a shame because you miss so much. So I've tried to make that a bigger part of my attendance at events is to stop, especially when you, go, you see people going to concerts and they're recording the concert instead of enjoying the concert. Because you can go and, get videos of concerts that are way better than what you could ever take. And if, the, if you, you know, whoever looks at that anyway, other than post today, I was at the Stones concert. Cool. But mm -hmm. uh, I think that's an important thing. So yeah, you, you shared a, a really valuable uh, idea there. Stop and smell the flowers and uh, put the phone down and experience the experience. And plus it shields you from people. If you're always having that phone in your hand, posting on social media, photographing things, people don't come up to you because they don't want to bother you. And then you might miss a great conversation or a great opportunity with somebody. Very so, true. Yeah. Great advice today. How about reading? Is there a great book you've read that you'd like to share with our listeners? So there's a series of books that I own and it, it, they're called So-and-So in Camera. So this one specifically is Formula One in Camera from 1980 to uh, 1989. And they do it every decade, starting from the beginning of Formula One, they, they're sports cars, but they're mostly picture books, which, you know, I'm a photographer. That so makes I'm, sense. I, okay. I'm studying, studying the photos. You know, I love to look at the old classic shots of Formula One cars in the, the 50s when there's just nothing, nothing protecting anybody. And they do have, you know, historical information and there's captions and all that kind of stuff in here as well. But, but yeah, I, I really enjoy that series and um, yeah, I'd recommend it. All right, so before I let you go today, Kenneth, I'm going to take you on the ultimate drive, which means you get to pick any vehicle, any person to be with, living or deceased, and any 
where. doesn't matter the cost, doesn't matter who it is or where. I have a magical drive today. What is that? It might include photography. I kind of think it might with you. You can take your cameras along. What does mm-hmm. that ultimate drive look like for you? That's a really tough question to answer. <laughs> I know. There's only <laughs> how many incredible roads are there to drive in this world? Uh, lots. Um, <laughs> lots. I think for me, I've, I've got a good buddy. His name is John, and I call him my automotive soulmate. And we kind of grew up together, like the same car, same you know import scene. We've kind of evolved the same ways. And we always talked about driving, just going on some mega adventure from like the southern tip of South America up into like Canada, just going for it, multi month long adventure. And it's kind of like the Top Gear sort of, right, uh, right, you know, right. stuff breaks down, you get lost in the middle of nowhere, you know, all you have to drive through a, a river, you know, it, to me, that just sounds like so much fun. Uh, well, I think so. So that begs to answer what car, what would you like to be in? You can be oh, in yeah. anything. Of I'm going to buy you whatever you want. Uh, um, I don't know. I really like the new Land Rover Defenders. Big fan. Mm. Um, okay. That would get you just about everywhere. Yeah, it needs it needs to be able to get me far. Originally, we had we had discussed this, me and John, about off road motorcycles, like a you know a cool BMW that could adventure bike that could take you anywhere, sort of thing. But now, the more I think about it, you know, it's like I'd rather not have to stop and pitch up a tent every night, or you know, I kind of want to have shelter with me, you know, that I don't have to set up, um, or I can hide from the rain, you know, these sorts of things. So I don't know, or maybe an old school Defender. I really like the look of the Defenders. So, you know. Well, I've had some guests on the show that take old school vehicles like that, but they put modern running drivetrains so Mm -hmm. they're way more Mm -hmm. reliable. I've even had a guest on last week who is taking those and making them totally electric. Uh, Everati is the company and uh, Justin Lunny, which is really interesting. He's also doing that with old Porsches and GT40s and eventually and Pagoda 280SL Mercedes. So uh, maybe that. But your adventure sounds to me kind of like uh, Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman's Long Way Around. Adventure. Yes, it's very similar. So I don't want to be like we stole it from that idea. We we talked about it long before then. I, I found something on the internet sometime, some blog that a guy had done it. And then I watched the Ewan McGregor uh, adventure not too long ago, and I was like, man, this is it. That's what I want to do. So Yeah, it sounds pretty cool. I was in a local area with my wife, beautiful Browns Point here, looking at a sunset, and there was an old uh, Volkswagen camper van that had all these stickers in it. And I'm like, what is this thing? And the guy walks over to me, and he only spoke Spanish, and my high school Spanish is pretty weak, but my wife speaks Spanish. So they were started talking, and he was taking an adventure by himself like that. He started at the tip of South America and was driving driving all the way to Alaska. And he was, had gotten to the Pacific Northwest. He had an Instagram page and you post pictures and so forth. Mm-hmm. And this was his big adventure in life and just, you know, taking months to do it. And uh, yeah, he was doing it alone. Uh, I think it'd be more fun with somebody, but maybe that alone time is a good time to in, uh, be introspective or whatever. But uh, yeah, it's probably something everybody should do in their life at some point. Most people do it when they're young before they get uh, settled down with a house and a mortgage and children and so forth. But maybe something to do with your kids one day. So we'll find out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Very good. Well, you've taken us on a fun ride today. I'd love to ask you this question before I let you go. Could you share maybe an inspirational thought, a success quote, a mantra, something that has meaning for you that might inspire somebody today? Going back to my mentor, she helps me all the time, all the time. And I asked her one time, why do you help me so much? And she said, you take great photographs, you're reliable, and you're fun to work with. And so I took that to, you know, to use all the time. Anytime I'm on a job, I want to take the best pictures I can. I want to be kind. And I want to be somebody that's fun to be around. Um, and hopefully, you know, that yields more friendships and more business. Uh, I can guarantee it does. Absolutely. Yeah. That's very nice. And that's Abigail. Yes. Yeah. Very nice. Nice job, Abigail. Before, uh, I uh, say goodbye, how, how can people learn more about you and, and see what we've been talking about today? Yeah. You can, uh, find me on Instagram at Midgeman. It's M I D G E M A N. Or you can reach out uh, via my website, which is just my name, kennethmidget.com. 
There you go. I'll make sure I put all these links on Kenneth's Cars yeah show notes page. You can go there and link to him. I encourage you to go and, and check him out. Follow him on Instagram so you can enjoy his photos as he uh, travels around and takes all these great pictures. If you love cars, you're going to love Kenneth's imagery because it is very cool. And I want to do a shout out to my good friend, Judy Stropas. She's the one that introduced me to Kenneth. Uh, she was involved and got me involved with the Chattanooga Motor Car Festival. She sent me her photography and I went, uh, I got to talk to this guy. This really stands out to me, really touches me. So Judy, thank you for another great, inspiring automotive enthusiast here on Cars Yeah. She sent me a lot of great people. Kenneth, thanks for being so generous today with your time and expertise and for sharing your story and your wonderful photography. Can't wait to see more of it. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. Had fun too. This was great. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah! Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!